the uh, and this will be we'll start with the Mr. Coon. Right. The, the the shortage plan has been referred to as the quote equitable distribution plan. Uh, isn't isn't this program really rationing? And if so, why not call it what it is? I've uh, asked that question myself. It's not rationing. It's actually it's uh, allocation. And allocation became a dirty word when uh, the law clearly states under the Water Code, <clears throat> the state of California, if you are limited to the amount of water in an irrigation district, the landowners or the water users of that irrigation district have an absolute right to an allocation. I mean, I, you can call it you can call it uh, equitable distribution, but it's it's an allocation and it is by law, not by choice. It says you will, and will means you shall. Thank you. Any rebuttal? All right. Uh, do we have a question for Mr. Gaius? Uh, yes. Let's see. When it turns out that a southern route for the Sunrise Power Link can't be built due to tribal opposition, will you support the northern route to ensure the development of renewable energy? That's a very good question. Um, I support the, the Southern Run only because of, uh, of the, what I've been reading. I, I really don't know that much about it other than, than what I hear from the existing directors. Uh, I don't know the way that sounded to the people at the Northern uh, side and really don't like it for fires and for other reasons. Uh, it, and as far as I'm concerned, I guess when it gets to that, I think I should do a little bit more studying before I really, really answer that. Thank you. Uh, any rebuttal? Let me, let me make a comment on that, please. Um, I'm very concerned about um, the ability of uh, Indian tribes to, to block projects, something like this. Um, it seems to be a one-way street that um, agreements have been put in place to help them put casinos off reservations. Uh, they're going to benefit from the power and I think the whole regional um, benefit should be uh, should be applied and, and there should be a way to um, to cooperate with the Indians and get the and get the reserva the reservation to allow the project to go through there. Thank you. Any other rebuttal? Mr. Gallegos, you have a response? No. Thank you. Uh, do we have a question for Mr. Cox? We do. Uh, Mr. Cox, from the consumer's viewpoint, IID seems to be out of control and inefficient. How would you change this? By improving the communication between, uh, first of all, between board members, uh, between the, the board and uh, management, between management and staff. Uh, I think our best resource in this uh, district is our employees. Uh, right now, um, those employees ideas about how to operate this district more efficiently are not always getting through management to the board. Um, some of their complaints are, are being short-circuited, not being, uh, being fully, uh, fully listened to. Um, the board needs to do a much better job of working to regain the trust of our employees, to, uh, to restore the trust both in the employees and the public. And, and to restore the image we have. We have a very dis dysfunctional image uh, and that affects how legislators look at us and how uh, other public agencies uh, choose to deal with us. Thank you. Uh, rebuttal. All right. And we have a, another question or two. Go ahead. Uh, this will, is this for a specific candidate? Yes, we have a, a question for uh, Ms. Mendoza, uh, is the IID electrical department, or, or energy if you want to use that term, in a better or worse financial condition since you've been on the board? Okay, I can tell you that, that as of the end of this year, 2008, there's going to be a surplus in the budget. We had some difficulties uh, with the I'll come right out with a hedging, the hedging strategy that was implemented. There, were, um, there was lack of oversight on management. Uh, the board was not informed. 
But I can tell you that we made up the deficit in-house, and we did, not, we did not pass that cost to you, the ratepayer. We, we ate it in-house, and the uh, ECA was set at 5, five cents, 5.01, 5 and it set that, that way till the end of this year. Even though we're not recouping the full cost of the natural gas, we're, not, we're going to eat that in-house, and we're, we're not going to pass it on to the ratepayers. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cox, you had a rebuttal? Yeah, I think the question I asked if the Energy Department is in better shape now than when my opponent took office. There's a lot larger debt. Some of that was because of project they had to do, but some of it also is attributed to the losses in the gas hedging um, fiasco. Um, her assertion that there will be a surplus in the uh, Energy Department budget this year uh, totally uh, overlooks the challenges of buying uh, energy with this rapid rise in the uh, commodity prices of natural gas and other energy. And I think it's a serious chance that we'll be um, uh, failing to meet our revenue uh, objectives and have a balanced budget in the energy side. Thank you. Any other rebuttals? Mr. Gaines. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they said that, uh, that they'll be financially all right. The only reason they're going to be financially all right is because uh, they they froze the ECA. The ECA is supposed to be supposedly be flexible so that you people don't get stuck with a lot of the, the, what they did. They added one cent. One cent brings in to the district twenty something like twenty two million dollars to the district. So uh, they, it's been froze what two probably three years. By the time they're done, that brings sixty some million dollars. Yeah, it's financially going to be all right. It's because you that are sitting out there paying for it. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Mendoza, you have a response. Yeah, a response. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I believe that we are financially sound. And if my opponent gets elected and he supports the Imperial Group in selling out the Coachella site, because he stated that twice in two public meetings, then you, you think you're paying a lot for energy now. Just wait to see if that happens. And it's real, folks. It's, he, he sits here saying, I don't, I don't, I don't support it. But once you say something, and you say it twice to the public, you can't take it back. Thank you. Uh, we've now come to the time of our... Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Mr. Coon, you're, you're out of order. We, we, uh, you needed to do that before we uh, let the original respondent uh, do her, um, her response. Uh, uh, Mr. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, we still have one question left for Mr. Minville. Go ahead. Mr. Minville, where would you put the completion of the IID's website transmission line upgrade on your list of priorities? Uh, say that again, please. I'm sorry. Where would you put the completion of the IID's website transmission line upgrade on your list of priorities? The website transmission upgrade? Correct. The uh, transmission upgrades for the whole Imperial Valley, West Side and the whole Imperial Valley, internal upgrades are vital. And I would put them as the number one priority because through those upgrades, that's how we're going to get the geothermal energy, solar energy back down to the IV sub by Mount Signal and help get it out of here on a 500 kV line with a southern route. So they're vital, number one. Any rebuttal? All right, thank you. Uh, now we'll go to uh, the uh, the round three. In, in this, uh, in the final round of questions, each candidate will have 45 seconds to answer the question. There'll be no rebuttals or no responses, and um, each uh, candidate will answer the same question. We'll begin with Mr. Kuhn. <clears throat> Mr. Kuhn, in an equitable distribution water plan, how will you guarantee water for new commercial and industrial development? If you, if the equitable distribution allocation is handled correctly, there should well be enough water for any new development in Imperial County. <clears throat> There's, uh, if, if it is mishandled or misapplied, then certainly there could be catastrophic uh, consequences for that in the, in the areas of economic development. So, I believe that it is 